fuel world? Not much. We, we did finally finish the house. We've been working on the house for almost a year. And so we, we, we have that done. And, yeah. you know, the kids are all back in school. Um, I'm anticipating a big spike in COVID with Thanksgiving and Christmas. That'll be fun. And oh. uh, I know. So not much, really. So we just have been doing some shows. But it's been a weird time. I mean, I think for a lot of people, it's yeah. still such a bizarre time. Speaking of it, I really wanted to ask you, what's going on with the American democratic system at the moment? Because we get lots of news reports regularly in our part of the world. <laughs> and you don't really know whether what you're reading is true or someone's put a twist on it. Oh, it, it it's all twisted. It, we, but it does look like it, crazy stuff. Okay, the term, I'm sorry, this is crass. It's a shit show. I mean, it is a, it is a, it, it's like kind of just watching people <laughs> go back and forth. But I, I don't actually, <laughs> I, I, it, I'm out. But it, then, it, then I, they, look, I they think, couldn't find anyone older. They couldn't find anyone. <laughs> why? Why can't they? You know why? I'll tell you why. And again, <laughs> this is not an educated guess they have to pander to the far extremes. They have to pander to these people. If yeah. anyone is seen in this country as working together, they're weak. Mm -hmm. And that's unfortunate because most yeah. of us are right here. We fall off a little on the left, a little on the right. Most of us aren't these extremes mm -hmm. that you hear about. And so, I mean, that's my take. And, and people that are nor normal, rational, they won't get in. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they just, they'll never make it. So... We'll see what happens. It'll be, I mean, how much, here's my question though. How much influence does president actually have on our daily lives? Often not a huge amount. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a figurehead, uh, like someone who says they're in charge of a ship, but they're not really controlling uh, the tiller. Right. There's a whole lot of mechanism and vested interests which drive it forward. So it's the person who believes they're in charge, even though it rolls on on its own to a large extent. I just don't think it's That's worth what I feel. This madness. I mean, just people are so I know right before the mm. election, I sat down with a girlfriend and a lovely person. I mean, just wonderful. And mm. the, the I mean, just the anger and the spitting nails and the I mean it was mm. just interesting and and I just you know and but we were all sort of in that place of just I mean everybody was so worked up it's yeah. like somebody had stepped in the ant bed and the ants were going nutty and so I'm ready I'm glad it's over well it is kind of over but not quite but it, yeah. it will be incident when I'm linking with you I can feel at a deeper level the nausea that it induces when you see that how it's all run I don't need to throw up because it's such a, a tricky kind of thing to just have to live with that it's run so badly um, and so childishly <laughs> that's the word and it, it but it's what it brings out in everybody around me that's I mean people that are otherwise kind and, and intelligent and non-emotional and people are just I mean that's what I'm I'm at the end of the day, hopefully that will go away. Some of that will go away. And, mm. and I, but I never understood the far left because everybody, I mean, most people think that I am and I'm not, I mean, I'm not left. I'm not right. I'm, I'm just somewhere, mm. but it's, um, yeah. and, and, you know, it's just, it's supposed to be peace loving, but I just saw such hate. I just saw such hate and, mm. and, you know, women fighting mm. with men and, you know, black fighting with white and rich fighting with poor. I mean, it, it, it just is, and I can't think, I mean, I have to think on some level, I mean, that this is induced, somehow this is induced, whether it's a state of mind yeah. as a co elective or even something bigger than that, I don't know. And, and I used to go down that, that hole and I don't now because there's nothing I can do with it. And it just makes yeah. me feel despondent, really. The, the other thing about it, I really see is how much people want to be fed lies it's like they're going give me some more lies i don't like the way the world is can you lie to me a bit more and then i can feel happier or i can get upset about some other lies as in follow the lie which is a 
mischief. So you can actually get upset that about something that hasn't even happened. <laughs> and it's like people getting lost in this desire for lies. <laughs> but isn't it a lot like when people used to stay home and watch soaps on TV, like Days of Our Lives yeah. or The Restless, and they just wanted to see, you know, or these re reality shows that are just nasty. I mean, they're, it brings in, whether they <laughs> really are, they cut it to look that way. And it's, it's like, I, I mean, there's so many things on TV that I, 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 I'll look at and think, I did a lot of work so that I'm not like that. <laughs> Why would I tune into it? <laughs> it's like it's that on a grand scale. It's like people want to be entertained. They want to be angry. They want to, they want the drama mm. and mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I think that if it's peaceful, people are bored. Well, I think that's it. Um, uh, joking with someone that's more uh, working with him, say, you'll find a lot of the beings who've come to Earth at the moment, they've been living on other planets, the ones who want to move ahead. Anyway. They've been living on other more advanced worlds. And then for a laugh, they go on holiday to somewhere like the Earth's level, <laughs> where it's completely chaotic. <laughs> so you've actually come here to have this kind of experience. Just sitting eating and popcorn. Come here to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've actually come here to do it and see what it's like and get lost in the whole thing and caught up in it uh, in many a moment. <laughs> at the same time, it's... Go on. What thought? You have you have any yeah. thought there? <laughs> it, it's like I don't know if you guys have it there, but back in the '90s, big thing you would go, you would eat at these places, and they would have a play going on around you, and you could be actually in interactive with the play. And it was just, I mean, whether you killed somebody or you know this happened, that happened, and you were part of the play. Mm -hmm. That's sort of what this is like. At least yes. what are you saying? Yeah. And here's the tip we have an opportunity to steer the play in whatever direction looks exciting. As a collective? Or the most or as Well, even our own individual things. I mean, look at the thing you're doing here. You've got up at five in the morning uh, in order to have a conversation that you could share with people around you in order to try and help wake people up. So you're clearly wanting to make a contribution to the world around you because you look at it and say i'd hate to die and it still be the same as when i arrived or worse i think it's actually worse well i don't know maybe every generation has had its its thing and i know that i mean mm -hmm. there was a uh, people that were born i want to say it was like 1910 or 1915 they went through world mm -hmm. war one world war two vietnam the mm -hmm. Depression. I mean, they went yeah. through a, a lot, a lot more than we are. You know, this is just this. You're right. Yes. And it just it's like for the sake yes. of, of going through it. So, you know, that's a good point, yeah. because I think once you realize that you control it, then you can undo it if you want to or you can. But yeah. like you said, I don't think a lot of people want to. And um, I also notice characters like me are contributing to the existence of people like Trump, because when we read about it, we find it fascinating. And we read about it and say, how could someone behave like that? How can that? But in a funny way, it's a part of an entertainment. It, and as a group energy, we're actually helping to create the very thing that we're moaning about afterwards. Yeah, but the moaning is part of the play. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, it is. So it's like, I'm going yes. to throw all of these things at you. And then I'm going to say, oh, I can't believe you acted that way. And it, it's like, it's <laughs> part of the, I don't know, you're right. Mm -hmm. I love this because it, it, it is, I think to put it in that context, it really kind of lightens the mood, <laughs> kind of makes it not so heavy. Yes. There's this feeling of if you don't interact or you don't read the news, then you put your head in the sand. And I don't want to put my head in the sand, but I don't want to participate. It's, it's the same stuff. And by the way, I do know someone that is pretty close to both of them um, in okay. the real world. And he kept saying, don't believe everything you read. Don't believe everything you read. It's not, <laughs> yeah. think it well, is. That... It's manufactured to a large degree. Not all. all. That, that's, yeah. 
that that's what I was you know saying. I say what's actually going on because when you see this stuff, you don't often know what's actually correct and what's been twisted round a bit. And it's really nice to find out what the reality is of it or the earthly reality, what actually happened as opposed to what someone reimagined afterwards because they didn't like the earthly, earthly version. So they had to reimagine a better version of it in order to make the story work and fluff it up a bit into something that was more exciting or promoted their message. <sighs> but don't you think that's life? I mean, don't you think that that you and I could be at a party and both walk away with very different things watching the exact same interaction it's such yes and if anything uh, we're designed to do that uh oh uh, the reason's quite yeah stripping off here it's got warmer now <laughs> but later on it suddenly might get a bit cold here and i'll have to put it back on again go ahead we digress <laughs> i'm having my coffee <laughs> we digress but you say, yeah, you have to do right. We did go to a party and we see different things. Um, and humans are designed to see things from different angles. In fact, all different beings are designed to do that. And it enables a collective observation. As long as you remember to give some credit to what the other character has to offer. So other people will see things you don't. And as long as we can combine this together in an intelligent way, instead of going, well, this is right and that's wrong in a judgmental way, we can collectively see a lot. And I find in my astral explorations, if I find somewhere fun, then I try and get everyone else to come and visit it too, because when they do that, they see things I never saw. Wow. <laughs> see, the, okay, so let's talk about that because it's, I, I I love going out and I love, I love connecting. And it's, it's, um, so where have you been recently? Have you, have you found anything that you'd like to talk about? Shifting gears away from uh, uh, the play. It'll, it'll, it'll come uh, back to me in a minute. Uh, but there was some, there was a message that we should be conveying today. And that is how are the world's govern themselves because in other worlds something we mentioned before too was they use a kind of sub god energy which is a higher version of collective consciousness we on earth would often see a lower version of collective consciousness which is quite good for starting wars because you can get it to different collective consciousnesses in different nations and they hate each other and tear each other's throats out in a rather nasty way but on more advanced worlds they do this with a higher energy and that collective consciousness helps guide them and inspire them. Uh, and when, for example, they've got it working really nicely, then they don't need things like money in their society because people are getting up in the morning, doing something that they want to do. And because now everyone works for free, doing things that they want to do and contribute into that society, you don't need to use money. There's plenty for everyone. <laughs> I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine that. People have talked about that moneyless societies and that's where we're trying to get to. Mm -hmm. But I can't even fathom. My brain starts thinking, well, but, you know, I start asking questions. So how does that look? I mean, how are those worlds as big as ours? Are there 8 billion people on those worlds? I mean, how does it work? Well, the best thing to do is whilst we're doing this recording, is to tune in on to such places, you know, get to at least one and see what we can sense about it <laughs> and see how they actually run the place. Okay. That's the easy way to do it, is to actually do that. <laughs> and anyone who happens to be watching this recording, if they get into a nice relaxed state, can start to do it as well. And they will pick up some other detail that we haven't picked up because as you so nicely described earlier, if two people go to the same party, they'll see slightly different things. And perhaps we could get some feedback later on from what other people also discovered okay. and picked up about how these worlds are run. <clears throat> so that's our, our plan. Uh, whilst we're out there, are there any other questions 
of this sort you'd like to look into whilst we're out and about and exploring? <laughs> what things have jumped into your brain uh, and have a think of, well, this is interesting. I want to know more about this. I want to know more about that. What else have you connected into lately that you wanted to know more about? <laughs> Oh, okay, this is a big one. This isn't one that you just kind of like asking about the cat. Um, this holographic reality that mm -hmm. I was, I've been told about, and it's, it's this, um, I feel like there are these, you know, we feel like we're on this one big world and, and, and we're looking at things from a perspective of of, um, and I don't know if this is just because we tune into TV, but I, okay, let me see if I can say this. It, it, we're looking at this world and we think, oh, there are 8 billion of us and there's, you know, there are people all over this big planet. But the reality is I only see what's right here. I only see my dog, my two cats. Yes. And so it's almost like there are all these little vignettes and I don't know mm -hmm if you're really in England. I don't know. I mean, how do I know? Yeah. Yes. And yes. the people in London, it's, I mean, uh, uh, India, I mean, how do I know? So are there really mm -hmm. 8 billion of us on a mm -hmm. planet? I mean, like, like when it's I- a, hmm. yeah. Well, the starting point of that one, you've answered the question is, if you'd like to see what it looks like from the perspective of the astral world, that's a good place to start. Because uh, when you're talking about uh, David or a cat uh, or anyone else, ultimately you're talking about other aspects of the greater you. So actually you are, in a strange way, in a world having a conversation with yourself. Explain that in a different way, because that does not break making it into my brain. I mean, I, I hear what you're saying and I, I under don't understand that. I mean, I, I, because we're all different aspects of the whole. And so I, I mean, I, I intellectually get that, but it's, I can't make sense of that. So let's try myself. The whole, in order to amuse itself and see what's going on, allows the creation of different vehicles it can experience. And each different vehicle has its own personality and will behave in its own way it allows the creation of life form and then it experiences being all of those life forms so at a strange rate when you're having a conversation with david or you're stroking a cat and saying some nice loving things to it then you're in a strange way you're actually having a chat with another part of you right but you're interacting with another part of you I get that, but we're not, ah, see, and then the next step that you're, you'll, you would talk about, if I was talking about you like you weren't here, is that then you can actually access that other version, almost like hop into them, right? You can't, can you access that's the right. perspective? Yes. Ah. We can access the different versions of our, ourselves. And what stops us doing it so much in this world is that when you're bumping into other versions of you, they're living their own lives, they're full of their own stresses. Uh, and after a short while, you get fed up of everyone else's stresses and their own lives. And you think, no, I'm just gonna have one little one on my own. That's all I can cope with for the moment. Go away, everyone else. So you'll switch back into your one. Uh, other people who like me very spiritual, they often go off and live in the forest or something like that to get away from all the other different experiences that are being generated. They find us hanging around there with a few plants and birds swooping down over them. That's what they can manage quite well because this human chaotic energy is there. And for that reason, we don't plug into it uh, too much because it is so chaotic. We find it very disturbing. So you can hop in and out, uh, but it'll really scramble you if you try it. <laughs> you, you need know, to stabilize very nicely after doing so. Um, when you had asked, when, when you began talking about the different worlds that look, that are set up differently or maybe have ascended to a different place, um, that's what I saw. I saw not a lot of people and a lot of green. 
a lot of green. And um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so that, that has been my big, and, and, and I'm not sure if I told you this, but the guides had said a while back that it, that's the thing is that on a different plane, we're all connected, but here we cut mm. the connection off. And so talking about love and, and how it's anyway, a whole different story that I talk about a lot. So, um, but it is that disconnection and you're right. I think by connecting in, you may mm. find that you actually like being in your perspective more because well, <laughs> comfortable. I'm rambling. Okay. So, so in order to have a look where we are astrally, uh, for anyone who doesn't know how to do that, the important thing is to breathe well using your diaphragm. Uh, and anyone who's on a nice, comfortable sofa needs to make sure they're as near to the edge as possible so that they're not clenching their stomach muscles inadvertently. And you need to start breathing using your diaphragm. Yeah, yes, we go around in a weirdly clenched state. Like all balled up. It's yeah. safety. It's safer. Yeah, that's constricted as safe. Yes. So if you want to start snapping out of the safety setting, it's fair enough. That's what stops us sensing a lot of things. Mm hmm. And we need to breathe using our diaphragms again. And we need to relearn how to breathe feeling happy. It's a wonderful way by the how politicians often work. They say, are you unhappy? If you're not unhappy, I'll remind you that you are unhappy and make you more unhappy. And when you've got thoroughly unhappy, then you need to vote for me and I'm going to make you happy if you voted for me. <laughs> and that's the deal. And then if someone's one, so you voted for me, you can all be happy now. That, it's funny. You, said, you voted for me, you can now have happiness. Mine was fear. I always feel like they say there's a lot to fear, but I'll save you. But let me create this fear. <laughs> I'll create the fear that I'm telling you, you need to be afraid yes. of the other people, the bombs, the hunger, Yes. you know, alien. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. So there we go. So breathing through again, and we've now breathing through with more sense of humor. Yes. And as you're breathing through, we have to do a little transition between thinking we're human bodies and starting to recall that actually you're a sort of higher light being that's got access to a human body. So you start the breathing through. And at first you start to imagine you might be a light being or not, uh, maybe or not. But the way to help that happen is to feel the energies coming through you of what you really are. Human form can feel the real you flowing in. So the human body can feel it going into the ends of its fingers and down into the ends of its toes. And that little tingle and energy wave it's created is the real you being more present. I do feel it. I, I do feel it. I feel it in my fingers. When you said yeah. that. Yeah. There you go. Well, I wouldn't have mentioned it if it wasn't there to feel. <laughs> <laughs> then you're not gonna play with our minds that way. Isn't that funny how sometimes it's just a matter of bringing it into view. It's there, you just have to bring it into view. Exactly, that's what we're doing. And we're helping the real you become more present in your body and flowing into the ends of the fingers and the toes and helping the body breathe in a relaxed way. Those earlier knots we talk about, we'll find now start to melt themselves out because the real you becomes present. And this, by the way, is the difference between doing it and imagining it. If you're imagining doing these things, the real you won't come in and won't be very present and your stomach will remain very tense. And by comparison, if you're letting the real you come in, it actually has an effect. <laughs> So that's how you're telling people. Are you feel mm -hmm. okay. Yes, notice the difference between 
thinking about it and actually doing it. And once again, what does it feel like to let your body become happier? It feels softer and it feels malleable. It doesn't mm. feel like a rigid, yeah. you know. Yeah. And in this, uh, just for a, let's switch it around. What does it feel like for the real you to get more present in the body it's created? What's it like for the real you sliding in there? It's almost, almost helping a body wake up. Finally, I keep hearing the word finally. <laughs> hmm. um, more animated. It feels more um, hmm. Hmm. like moving from a black and white almost to a yeah. color. So it's like waking the body up out of a dream and it goes from the monochrome world to this more colorful, energetic world. Yes. And also have a look. Now that it's lining up, you see the body's being naturally aligned. And if, you sent, if the body's sent through the top of its head, it can see the light of the real you. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing about it. If you're not doing a good job on this, you look up and it'll look black. It'll be out of line. But as the real you is allowed to come through to the body, it lines the body up with itself. So if you look through the top of the body's head, you can sense there's the real you. And we can also start to pick up those forgotten energies like unconditional love again. Mm -hmm. The most are like, where did that get to? <laughs> and what's it get? What's it like to feed the unconditional love down into the human form? I know this is going to sound weird, but it's, yeah, I can relax. It's like, it's mm. almost a grateful, really, it's almost like a, a, um, a grateful, like, thank you. Thank you for playing your role. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for reminding me. I mean, mm. meaning mm. politics and, you know, they're playing a role. And it's, it's yeah. when you can see it from other perspective, it's, it's like, good on you. That was a storm, but you did a good job. Yeah. Yes, it's like we're, we're having fun in the midst of this. Having fun, yeah. God. David, wouldn't it be amazing if, if people could really see that? If people could see that this isn't to be feared and ulcers and stress and heart attacks. It's actually fun. I mean, it, 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 it's actually not boring and how fun is not boring yes yes this is the beauty of what's going on in that sometimes people have to experiment with an opposite chaotic state mm -hmm. in order to remind themselves of what would be better you know i was, I was what they prefer i was explaining that to my mother we were we were a few days ago talking about I said, you know, even, I mean, think of the most atrocious people in history. I mean, it's, it, it's different when it affected your family directly, I'm sure. And so I'm not taking that off the table, but I'm, but in this world, you have, in order to choose good, you have to have the opposite. And it's, we're in a world of yes. polar, mm -hmm. polar, I can't say the word polarity. And so you have yes. that. So someone agreed to come in and play that role. You know, how, how, yes. yeah. Uh, very often in groups, uh, in order to help that happen, as soon as someone is in another group, you say, well, they're the evil, horrible one. And the person in the other group say, we're wonderful and good, and you're the evil, <laughs> horrible one over there. And they just point fingers like that. And that's how they operate. And then the energies of the other person is nasty, really gets flowing. <laughs> Okay, and let's take that one step beyond. If Al-Qaeda thinks what they're doing is right, 
And yeah. And that is, and, and that's actually how this topic was brought up with my mother is that we were, we were discussing, she's in this Bible group and, and they're all very good friends mm. of hers. And she was talking about, um, they're reading old Testament. God was pretty angry back then. And she was saying, <laughs> yeah, and how, and I don't know much about it, but I do know he was pretty angry. And they were talking about how there was a, a group that God said, go kill that group. And so they're, and they're like, oh, okay, we'll kill the men, but not the women and the ch- and you know and the kids. And so then God just, just them. to pause you, just to pause you, the uh, it's just a thought that was dropped into my head, turned into this. If you're saying the angry God one, so what would happen if you had a society that didn't understand the concept of a happy, playful God? but they're in a society where everyone's very rough. And the only way they could really think of it was in terms of God might be angry. So a godly presence might look down on the humans and go, what are you guys up to? That looks ridiculous. Are you crazy down there? Come on, do it differently. And down, down at the earthly level, if they didn't really understand that playfulness, they could read it as, oh, God says we're doing it all wrong and we haven't followed rules yes he's giving us rules that's what's happening and we've done it all wrong and he's upset with us because they couldn't understand the concept that some godly presence might just be laughing at its own creation (laughs) i like that i like that idea i see and it's all it's all right i mean it's all possible but i mean yes but this is anyway i interrupted your mom and the old testament and the excitement that that generated well, it was it was talking about it, it, basically it's thou shalt not kill, but then go kill these people, and and that's where I, and I didn't mean to get preachy, but it but it I said but that's you know we talk about jihadist and how mm-hmm. awful and bad, and I said but what you're what you're saying is the exact same thing, and and I said but mm-hmm. see how everybody thinks they're right i mean this is just tying it back into what you're saying very long-winded way but everybody thinks they're right Mm -hmm. nobody's doing things to be mean people are doing things Mm -hmm. because they think they're right and you're wrong (laughs) yes um people often think that they're i'm sorry bringing a better culture to wherever they show up Uh, and the europeans have been notorious for that they took over places like Africa, uh, India, and thought, well, we have to, India, took over that. The, the, in states like South America, uh, between bringing European civilization plus the common cold, which was equivalent to the coronavirus for them, uh, and worse, I believe they wiped out about 20 million Incas in the process was the figure it was like a sort of genocide that went on you've seen a lot of that in north america uh, the north american indian Smart. population mm-hmm. sort of largely snuffed out and reduced to very small numbers so you get civilizations coming in thinking they're bringing something better uh, and crushing what they find underfoot in the process you know yes uh, um, certainly uh, what goes on and that's what cultures are trained to think so one is better than the other and that's why we're switching into this today Uh, so if you can recover now your breathing you'll notice we've gone down the rabbit hole of this happened and everyone is listening you'll find you've practically stopped breathing it's amazing people haven't suffocated in the process (laughs) yep (laughs) yeah yeah and what does it feel like when you just switch the breathing on and then more of the real you can become present in its human body again. And try and pick this up from the perspective of the real you. When it comes in, recovering a body that's just got a bit lost, what's it like to come back into a body that had got a bit lost for a few minutes? It's like reanimating. It, 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 it's hmm. like you have to replug it in. But also there's this very distinct carry out there and carry in here, you know, and, and mm. I, I like to think that I live my life the same wherever I am, but there is a, of the world. And then there's a pulling mm. back and plugging back in. It's very different view. Yes. Mm. So, so 
when we're plugging in what you really are into the body, it wakes it up. And for the next few minutes, it gets a bit more insightful before it gets lost in some little daydream or other. And that's the nature of where we are. Uh, but that's the adventure. It's like, what's it like when you come out of the daydreams? What do we see when we come out of the daydream? So look through the top of your head again. Remember that really, we let it in, but we forgot to look at it. And we forgot to connect into the unconditional love that the real you radiates and is powering the whole show we're experiencing. So bizarrely, even though we're in a weird world, it's powered by this amazing unconditional love. The anxiety almost immediately falls. Yeah. 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 I'm hearing my people so We're then asking the question about when this call was done, uh, Kerry and David were about 4,000, uh, uh, that's uh, American or English miles apart, which translates to about uh, five and a half, six thousand kilometers separated uh, thereabout. That's how far geographically they were apart. Uh, but thanks to the modern miracle of Zoom, it would seem like they're near enough in the same room, uh, albeit the temperatures would be slightly fluctuating, depend on who, who was in which bit of stream of air. But at an astral level, what does it feel like there? So for example, when you start to sense the David being at an astral level, how nearby does it seem? You're right here. Yeah. But I have to say that I don't feel that separation. I mean, it, this is something I'm learning about mm. myself um, because you don't know who, you know, if you've always had it, you don't know, is that when I think about somebody or I'm talking to somebody, they're right there. I mean, there's no separation. That's it. Mm -hmm. So what you'll find right now is all the things that often seem very distant are around you. The world that David or Kerry would experience is astrally right beside them. In fact, they're so blended with it. In many ways, everything happening around you is aspects of yourself that can be observed as being aspects of you. And that's funny, I feel Kerry doing that right now. She's reaching into the other bits around her going, yeah, that is me. Well, that's good. Exactly what I was doing. <laughs> that's funny. I don't fully understand it, but I, I feel it. Yes. I don't have to fully understand it. Yeah. I can feel how happy you get when you've removed that feeling of separation, when you just switched it off for a few minutes. The joy comes back into us. It does. And there's a little tip. We often get the opposite state of joy by creating a perception of separation but even though at this higher astral level we're connecting it into, we realize that was an illusion. There was no separation. So do you ever feel into people? I mean, like, um, like maybe on the world stage, do you ever feel in to these characters? Do I feel... Do you feel into them? Do I feel what? Please elaborate. Uh, what often happens is they start off by seeing someone as separate and then often say, oh, that's clever or thinking they're being stupid, you know, because we're very critical in our human bodies. We've got amazing critical faculty. And um, then if you're hanging out with your guiding spirits, they start to tap you on the shoulder and remind you to pay attention to the reality of what's going on. And you begin to realize those other people we see are almost an aspect of oneself acting out. So it's almost like a part of you acting strangely, but a part of you that doesn't seem very aware. It's switched off its awareness and now it's behaving more or less on automatic. And this is what, what do you want to bring you to next. When you're looking at people who are acting really, really strangely, they're often running on automatic. It's like they're running a program. 
and they can't seem to change their program because they're not demonstrating any free will. It's rather like it's a closed system. They're on a loop. You know, that was actually what you said yes. it beautifully. That's exactly what I was just thinking. And that, that's what I was going to ask you is, is but the way I interpreted it, I, I've often thought of background people. Um, because if I don't know them, then mm. I haven't, golly, you're making sense of this. If I don't know them, I haven't animated them. And so it, it, it like, for example, if you go to a mm. sporting event and or an airport and there are thousands of people there. Yeah. Are they background people? Are they are they the people in animation, like in a Pixar animation, that they just sort of pepper pepper the scene with? And and um, mm -hmm. this is going to sound weird, but is Trump real? I mean, is, is is he a real being? I mean, that sounds really weird, but in the context of this topic, yeah, is he even real? Now you're tensing a little bit, which would. And this is what happens when you ask a really good, interesting question, but unfortunately you have to tense to do that. Okay. So what we needed to do is recover the breathing. You were so tense there in order to relax yourself out, you're sort of lying back, <laughs> but we we're just hoping you'd relax your stomach. <laughs> That's why I have abs. See the... good abs, because I keep them constricted. No, I'm kidding. Okay, all right, all right. For anyone who's not... It, for anyone who's not come across the idea of breathing better before, it's a really good idea just from the perspective of staying thin. We are living in a world where most of us have lots of food chucked in our direction. It's relatively cheap and plentiful. Uh, and uh, it's often so low on happiness that we have to eat large quantities of it to feel slightly better and uh, neutrified. So we tend to overeat, if anything in order to get some emotional nourishment because we're eating very dead food. And that means we're absorbing a lot of carbon into our bodies. So you become like a little carbon reservoir, which then fills up in the fat cells of your body as oil. If you boiled us down, uh, you'd actually be able to make nice lamp oil out of us because we get all this fat in our body. So there you are, it's like oil storage depot. And the way we get rid of this is by moving but most of all breathing properly because when we breathe better we convert all the carbon in the form of oil back into carbon dioxide gas and we send it off to feed the plants and nature all around us so remember to breathe properly because you're feeding nature it's your job yes well said I feel how you breathe differently when you remember that now. I do. I do. I breathe deeper. Probably shouldn't cross my legs, that will help. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to how we were looking in the astral world. You could sense David there. You could sense yourself there. And we'd have to include at least one other person. That'd be... There must be one other viewer who's going to watch this afterwards. They can join in as well. Let's 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 invite Tiffany too. Okay. And you can feel it's still a very close little clique. You haven't created a vast world. We're still in a relatively close little world where we're generating our own peculiar reality. What does it look like to you? It looks like a big blob of light separated into different colors. And the different colors can be our personalities of one person or another. And if we need to create more people, you just slice up the colors a bit more. It's like you create more of a spectrum within the rainbow. So you take an original ball of white light and you can slice it up a bit you slice it up as much as you want or put it back together into bigger clumps it's up to you you know what's fascinating about what you just said and I'm sure I've told you this story oh. I know I've said it somewhere on the show I remember that night um well I mean the story is I I, I was sitting at dinner with my family and I got the buzz, the ring in the ear and I looked around and I'd asked years ago, I'd asked about, 
I don't know, something and my guides and they showed me a grid, like a space, like a, like a grid, you know, it's all black, like you're out in space mm -hmm. and everywhere. And I'm, there was an overlay. So I'm looking at this restaurant and everywhere I'm looking where there's a human is a ball of light, an orange ball, a green, uh -huh. yes. it was almost like this grid yeah. and at these different nexus points, but I see a girl with blonde hair, but she wasn't really there. It was, I mean, she was there, but they were showing me how she really looked. Yeah. So, and it was exactly that ball of light with the different colors. That's cool. Hmm. So this is a beautiful thing. You're, you're looking at other bits of you. And we're experiencing the illusion of being on earth because we wanted to be on earth. And here's a thing to chip in. Sometimes I say, I think I'm in the wrong job here because to get to the earth level compared to some other worlds, it's relatively low dimension. So you have to really go down deep to come to very low dimension. It's the equivalent of going diving out in the ocean and trying to swim down to an ocean floor that's a long way down. It takes a lot of effort to get there. So you have to swim hard and kick your feet to get to the bottom and then maybe find a rock there and grab onto the rock and hold on tight. And if someone like David comes along and says, do you want to float to the surface now? Most people go, no, no, I've just spent all the effort to come down here. Don't ask me to go back up again. <laughs> so I often feel like I'm in the wrong job here because I'm enabling people to sort of... Uh, Let's go up to the surface again when they put all this uh, effort to get to the bottom and cling on to some heavy rock and identify themselves as that rock and think that's what they are okay so let me ask you this i love that that visual let me ask you this i've often said that i don't want to be one i mean i came here for the separation like everybody says oh you know, we're all one i mean i don't want to be one i like being uniquely different and and uh, you know in a matter of seconds mm -hmm. i'm going to be one with everybody again and and but that brings a good point if we came to experience this then why are we trying to get back to the other side i mean what's the point is it is that the game can you release the breathing again this is a tricky thing because in the relationship we're playing here, you're being an interviewer and the interviewer has to ask good questions. But for the interviewer to ask a good question, she has to block out some of her inherent knowledge that she already knows the answer. Well, I want to hear you say it though. And it causes your breathing to lock up. Well, and in me, it's, it's again, it's bringing it, bringing it into a focus. So, so I mean, but yes. you brought that up why why then why are we trying so hard to peek behind the veil when we're always behind the veil it's sort of like saying i'm going to mm -hmm. france and i normally live in houston mm -hmm. but all i want to do is eat american food and watch american tv and i mean what's the point of going to france if you can do that back at home well you've got you've you've just got most of the way towards the answer on that one and that is if we just come down here and lock ourselves into the earthly illusion and don't remember what we are, we're just kept on rails of what that illusion is. You get locked into your chosen personality and you can't alter it. Your chosen personality, your chosen body characteristics stay whatever they are. It just gets older and eventually dies. You can't really tinker with it. And to tinker with it, you do need to look behind the veil and you need to discover how the script is being written, where it's being written. And when you see what's writing the script and generating that reality or experience, you can start to play with it and maybe make it more interesting. And I'm sure everyone here would have some ideas about how they can make the reality they're in more interesting. So. See, but part of the script for most people is like the reason a lot of people get initially get into law of attraction is they want a job, they want a partner, they want whatever it is they want. But then of course they get into mm -hmm. it and they realize it's much bigger than it's not about a car. It's not about, you know, maybe it is about yes. a spouse, but it's, yeah. um, it's about the feeling you yeah. have when you have the car. So what you're saying is mm -hmm. we come in and then there are some of us that say, I want to tinker, you know, I want to see how great this can get, or I want to, you mm -hmm. know, experience these different things. Yeah. It's, um, this is flowing nicely. 
Is. So why we look behind the veil is so that we can play more dynamically with what we're in the midst of and start to recall that we even wanted to be here, start to pick up more a recollection of it, of what we're up to. We chose to come in. Okay. So, so once again. Go ahead. So as I was saying, the sort of astral connect, we can see where we're grouping together and we can also see the sort of greater parent energy of what's driving us. And again, pick up the unconditional love of that. You know, if you're connecting into it, because you get the unconditional love. And if you know it first, let me just try a bit more and just let it come back through and breathe that through into the human form okay. so it can understand it again. And we've got the unconditional love and also we can pick up some of the playfulness of what we really are. And as far as we're doing this, for anyone who looks further than the light, you'll find it's like being in a sort of black world, but there you are, this sort of light thing in the middle of the darkness, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. creating things to entertain yourself and running different experiments. And you see, when you're doing that, you get a bit wider. The whole system expands. Going back to the idea of a holographic reality. Mm -hmm. I hear children. They're all starting to- That's the whole thing of being a mom. Moms are programmed to be anxious about children because moms have to keep them alive until, well, I don't know how long. Uh, the moms are trying to keep them alive forever and then their grandchildren. They're very much programmed uh, to do that. We are programmed to. And that's what keeps the human race alive. It's also being mom. Uh, moms, especially women, were programmed to be attracted to more intelligent and capable men which helped the whole human race advance forward. You would think. No, <laughs> no, I say that anyway. So how did you know? Um, it was interesting because you reached out to me a couple of days ago and, and said, we need to do this. And that particular day, it would just hit me between the eyes and, and, that that's why I was on a walk, and I was like, "Okay, how about now? <laughs> Do you want you want to go? I, I can go home oh, <laughs> on some little lip gloss, and we'll you know we'll do that." So, how did you what what made you reach out? An energy to do that was uh, getting. Mm. Go ahead, energy. An energy to do that was getting closer. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. Then there seemed to be a moment where it was right there. So I thought, oh, this is a good moment to send a message. It was. It's, it's, a, it's a bit like uh, when you're trying to see different planets about. Sometimes people would say, we're going near Mars at the moment. If you look into the night sky, you'll see a Mars. So it's like these sort of energetic forms are coming into an alignment. And there was felt of, there's a good alignment here. This is a good moment to reach out. And other times it would feel like uh, sort of busy somewhere else, uh, leave it for a bit and then it'll come back into alignment. So it's just playing with that one and trying to catch it. And that's what we're often encouraging everyone who's listening to this to do is try and sense those moments where there's a good energy to do something, even if it can only be a little thing. Uh, so for example, outside my office, uh, one morning, I suddenly had an energy to remove a very annoying do not park here sign. There's a bigger estate uh, uh, and they have little signs say do not park or the estate owners will send you a fine. And this particular area was a pavemented area. No one parks there. But the sign was really ugly and affixed outside the front door of the office building where I work with ugly metal clips. And I thought, you know what, that sign's not going to last. Someone's going to remove it one day when no one's looking. And one morning, I just came into the office, thought, there's no one looking today. It's time for that sign to go on its own little journey. <laughs> and what amazed me was, no one ever said afterwards, even though I know other people in the audience, no one ever said, oh, the sign disappeared. I wonder who did that. 
I wonder how that mysteriously just vanished one day. Are you allowed to do that? Who got rid of the pointless note that I... No, of course you're not allowed to do that. We did it anyway. We removed the rather ugly no parking sign where you weren't going to park anyway. I mean, pointless with its rusty clips bringing down the whole neighborhood. Yeah, you know, I bet you. Never mind. That's funny. So it was time. It was the time. Stars it was the time. It was just you could feel it. And if we can be more sensitive to these moments, there's a lot of fun we can have. Well, you're asking us to be aware. <laughs> yes. Well, the alternative is what? What would you describe the alternative as? Automaton. 